this week's episode, I spent some quality time with the world's largest land mammal. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Our idea in terms of what we do is we feel that the Ellies are ambassadors and they really highlight the issues facing elephant, other animals, wildlife, uh, conservation and conservationists in an ever-changing Africa. So what we're trying to do is show people that there's a lot more to elephant than just watching them in Kruger or National Geographic and, um, and uh, we're really trying to show people that uh, we need to try and find as many different values for these guys as we can in order for a wide variety of people to want to look after them into the future. Whether it's sentimental, whether it's educational, um, and all of that, or just pure inquisitiveness. So I'm with a couple of young bull elephants. They're about 17 or 18 years old, so teenagers. They have a lot more growing to do. They'll grow till about 30, 35 to 40 years old. They'll keep growing. And uh, the lifespan's around 65 years old. So these guys are still very, very playful, probably a bit mischievous. So they're basically just having fun with each other. Now, obviously, these guys are habituated. You can't simply go up to wild animals like this. So they're obviously used to human presence and, and obviously I have people off camera that uh, are here to ensure my safety as well. Their sense of smell is actually amazing and uh, superior in the animal kingdom. I mean, we know dogs have a very strong sense of smell. These guys, it's about twice as sensitive. So they're actually quite uh, amazing at detecting things through scent um, and remembering things as well. So and you can see they're being quite rough with each other. I mean, they obviously know each other's uh, strength and capabilities. Yet when they're interacting with me, they know that I uh, that they need to be gentle with me, and so they're being quite delicate. And it just shows they're, I mean, perfect example. They're obviously not going to do that to me. <laughs> Hello. So gentle. Self-awareness is considered one level of intelligence, but understanding the awareness and having empathy for other beings is a whole other level. <laughs> I think you guys might be showing off. Typical, typical pair of teenage boys. Yeah. <laughs> such a privilege to be this close. <laughs> now they're known to have really long memories and be highly intelligent. They also have very close-knit family ties and they communicate a lot amongst each other. And most of that is actually inaudible to humans. So we, I think we can hear about a third of, of uh, their vocalizations, with most of it actually one or two octaves below what the human ear can detect. Such amazing animals. I mean, they're so immense and yet so gentle. I mean, you can barely hear them when they're walking through the bush. All that cushioning uh, is like suspension in their feet. So uh, it's surprising how they can disappear into the bush and you not hear them. They actually have quite complex family structures and it's led by a matriarch, which is um, uh, an older female. And so 
When uh, males get to puberty at around 14 years of age, they'll then go out and they'll find a bull uh, group, uh, something you know fairly loose that they will uh, travel around with, and the females will stay in the group and uh, and remain in the family. I mean, you can see they're such social animals. They're very tactile. They like to touch and interact and communicate, and obviously not just through vocalization, but but through touch and body language, just like you and I. <laughs> now they'll spend the better part of their day foraging and they can consume about 300 pounds so that's about 136 kilos per day which is I mean imagine eating that that's amazing and it's actually quite simple for them if uh, you know if something's out of reach it's quite easy for them to knock down a whole tree to get to the the leaves that they want to forage on how coarse the hair is on the tail and obviously that's helping to get rid of flies and anything annoying on the body uh, and it is it's quite interesting that the length of the tail here goes to a certain point on the body to brush away anything that's annoying them to a point where the trunk coming back around from the front will reach so there's basically just a slight overlap and that will keep uh, keeps their whole body covered so that uh, if there's anything annoying, flies or insects, maybe some parasites, that they can flick away. So it's quite well known that the ears of elephant are part of the cooling system. They have a lot of veins running through and you might be able to see that on the back there. And flapping them helps to regulate their temperature. But you can also see, thank you, on the front section here, it's really quite rough and that's obviously exposed to the elements. If they're walking through the bush, that's what's going to get hit by leaves and branches. Whereas on the inside, it's actually really, really smooth. Like you can't even believe how smooth that is. Some of it is almost velvety soft. It's just amazing. And obviously that's protected on the inside. They're going to have their ears back if they're going through some, uh, some thick bush there. So as you can see, we're about to have an afternoon swim. We're going to cool off because it's very hot. So I might go join them. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Join me next week. And in the meantime, make sure you head over to shannonwild.com and check out the blog where I have more photos from this week's episode.